What's up, everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Today I'm doing a matchup between two Glendronic 18 year olds. It's these two bad boys right here. You got the Allardyce to my left and the Townie Port to my right. I've reviewed both of these in the past. I do plan on adjusting the mark on this one in this review. Before we continue with the video, guys, I just want to quickly talk a little bit about Snups. So Snups is this app right over here. Give it a click. This is already the Explorer page, right? And the way to get there is to click this button right here, all right? My group is the Whiskey and the Six group, as you guys would know, all right? Uh, I want to share a couple comments. First of all, um, a lot of activity lately with Justin making a trade and acquiring some awesome whiskey. Uh, I'm going to get back to my discussion topic, but I just want to share a couple of things. Donald's been posting quite a few things, has a lovely collection. Choi also has some awesome things to share. He recently posted the announcement of the McAllen Edition 4 which for collectors, that's an exciting topic, all right? Um, I'm gonna go back to the comment that I made recently, and it's for Glendronic collectors. So for those Glendronic collectors out there, do you think Glendronics of old will go up in value based on the potential decline in quality with the new master distiller? Some answers will be selected and shared in my next video. So. That's your opportunity. You guys can uh, comment below. There are already some comments coming in, but we'll share those in the next video. All right, guys? If you have any questions about Snaps, leave those comments in the comment section below. Yes. Cheers. This is a 27 edition, uh, 2017, sorry, um, edition. And the one I reviewed previously up here is 2015. Um, for those of you that don't know, Glendronic closed down in 1996. I explained this in some of my other videos, so for those of you that do know and have heard this many times before, I apologize, but they closed down in 1996 and reopened in 2001. What is believed to have happened is they put a bunch of barrels aside for the, 15, the 12, the 15, the 18, and the 21. and Basically what they said was they're gonna use those specific barrels for those specific expressions and it didn't matter how old they got. So essentially, based on a chart that I've shared in my live, if you haven't watched it, you can go back and check it out. It's basically the video before this one. Um, there's a chart that shows exactly how old all of the expressions are at what year so at 2017 this 18 year old is actually supposed to be 22 years old or 21 years old some people think that the chart might be off by a year um, either way you're supposed to be getting older whiskey now the things that make me believe that that's true is number one the way this tastes and number two when I first tried the Glendronic 12 year old, it happened to be a 2012 or 2013, I can't remember exactly. And I remember looking at the chart well after I've, I tried it and thought it was the best 12 year old I ever had. And I found out that that one was actually 18 years old. And silly me, uh, I didn't stock up at the time, went back to find out that they were reset back to 12 years old after the year that it hit 18. So there's a six year window where it'll get six years older and then it goes back to its original. So I believe the 15 year old revival is now back to its original in, 20, in 2018. Um, the, actually, sorry, it was back to its original after the 2016 expression. And this will be for a couple more years. I believe it'll be for two more years exactly. And then it, it, it resets. So, um, Expect some awesome things in the next couple of years, especially when you're talking about the 21 year old when it gets up to 27 years old potentially. All right, so enough of that. I'm gonna taste both of these. I've given both of these a mark in the past. I plan to adjust the other dice, like I said. I'll, I'll get to a couple other things at, at the end of the video as well. 
So, on the nose. This one is loaded with coffee and chocolate, and there's a beautiful maltiness to this one as well. If you're a sherry lover, this is everything you want in a sherry dram. It's unchill filtered, no added color, um, just really, really dark, okay? And just so you get an idea of how dark, it's a lot darker than the Towny Port 18 year old. Okay, the Towny Port is a finish, probably refilled um, European oak before that. It is European oak, but it's probably refilled uh, European sherry. So then they put it into a port barrel. Whereas this one is just its whole life in Oloroso sherry casks. And it smells incredible. Now, I've talked about this one in my video, and at first, I was not a fan of this whiskey, all right? Now that it's about halfway down the bottle, it is drastically improved. And there is a big difference on the nose on this one. So this is much more grapey. Get like the smell of Easter bread, which I tend to get with port finishes. Some vanilla in there as well. But definitely like sweet bread. That's the number one thing I get on these ones. And a little bit of like a strawberry note as well. On the palate with the Allardyce. Mouthfeel mouth is incredible. It's super smooth, despite being bald at 46%. A lot of coffee up front. It's sweet, it's got dark chocolate. It's got like rum raisin type notes. Loads of dark fruit, loads of dried fruit. And a beautiful like cappuccino note almost um, and the reason why I say cappuccino is because it's got like a creaminess to it it's not necessarily just like a harsh bitter uh, espresso I love espresso I drink it black but there's way too much sweetness here to to um, compare it with an espresso it's just a beautifully balanced whiskey in my opinion So there are similarities here, which I'm actually just noticing for the first time. <clears throat> the Tiny Port is a little lighter, not as creamy. Um, it doesn't have the dark chocolate, milk chocolate type notes. It has more of a sweet, bready, like I said, like sweet bread type note. Um, I think a good a good type of bread to compare it to is like that uh, cinnamon bread basically, cinnamon toast bread. Um, I think the biggest knock on this one is that it's a little light, still beautiful, it's unchill filtered as well, it's no added color. and. It's still bottled at 46%, but I think there's a lot more refilled uh, European casks with the towny port um, up, until the f uh, up until the point where it's transferred into the port barrels. So I think that's what the biggest drop off is here. Whereas with that color and that flavor, there's gotta be a lot of first fill in here, or at least a good portion of first fill. Maybe not majority, but. It's amazing. Beautiful whiskey. I have 
three of these bunkered for good reason because I plan to enjoy these um, forever and hopefully I can add more to the collection so that I can have one open at all times. These ones are gone. They're not gonna be replaced, I don't think. Um, so if you can find one, I would say it's worth the buy, but you need to let it sit. I've seen Ralphie uh, pour whiskey through a decanter before. That might actually work with this one. I wouldn't be surprised if it improves it a lot faster. It's much better at this level than it was when I first started drinking it. I'm not gonna change the mark though because I do I do feel that I I almost like hated it at first. I was so upset with it. I was so uh, discouraged by it. And then it, like I said, drastically improved. And that's after sitting in the bottle for quite some time. So this is amazing off the hop and it's not even a fair comparison because I just opened this bottle. Um, there's only about three to four or three generous pours removed from this bottle. Um, so it's not a fair comparison, but this is already light years ahead in, in quality in my opinion. So I'm gonna give this an A plus. I gave it an A originally, I think it was like an 89. It was my whiskey of the year in 2016. I was a harsher marker at that time. I think my palate has changed. I've come to accept things maybe a little bit more. Maybe I'm enjoying them a little bit more as well. Um, but that's an A plus and I do suspect that that's actually gonna improve. Although I won't include it in my whiskey of the year this year because it's already one whiskey of the year. I was introduced to it uh, in 2016. So I don't think it's fair to include that, but that's like a 94. That's like a 93 or 94 in my opinion. It's excellent stuff. I plan to drink as many of those as I possibly can before I die. Um, and it's being discontinued, so you might want to start collecting. I want to give a quick shout out to my buddy Santa Cruzin. He's a longtime supporter of this channel, and we made a trade. I got the old Rip Van Winkle 10 year old in the trade. Um, it was more of a donation than a trade in my opinion. He, he gave me this bottle knowing that he wasn't getting the better end of the deal. Um, and all he asked for was a lot 40 cast strength, which I had a couple of, so I traded that to him. Um, he's a super, super great guy. It's actually, I had two lot 40 cast strengths recently that I, one was won by a guy named Chris in Alberta, but this is uh, the other lot 40 that I sent to Chris in Santa Cruz, uh, California. So thanks for that, buddy. I really appreciate it. He also sent me two lovely glasses. Um, they're like nice little grappa brandy sipping glasses. I guess you can sip whiskey in those as well. Anyway, you guys can check me out on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Snups. All right. Um, if you guys have any questions about Snups, about what I talked about earlier, please share it in the chat, share it in the comments below, and then I can address that in my next video. Okay, guys? Cheers.